bit of it and some earnings um, as well. We should really point out for those of you at Global Wall Street, the major news today is a manufacturing slowdown or is used uh, informally recession in manufacturing in Europe. And you see that decisively uh, in the German two-year yield, the German 10-year yield, and the Swiss complex all deteriorating to new lower yields. We're really buttressed up against record low yields, uh, ever greater negative yields uh, in Europe as well. Sterling 124.90, we should inform you that it's widely anticipated the Chancellor of the Exchequer has resigned. That was about 20 minutes ago, maybe in the opening comments of the Mueller uh, investigation. Uh, but, <laughs> excuse me, what we can say is uh, the present cabinet is stepping aside as Prime Minister Johnson at some point in the London afternoon and evening maybe will begin to form a new cabinet um, as well. Paul, what else do you see within the data? You know, it's interesting. I think the uh, we, we get the earnings here this week. We're gonna, you know, we're going to pivot to some of these technology companies. So uh, it's just interesting timing given the DOJ uh, opening their investigation. We see earnings on them. We see yeah. earnings coming, and I think you know it, it allowed the investors to focus back on kind of the core uh, businesses of these companies, which remain very strong. With whether it's uh, digital advertising or e-commerce, some of those uh, long-term tailwinds uh, likely will be reflected in the numbers. Stephen Cohen of Tennessee is speaking now. We're going to stay with the market opening, get that done, and then move back to uh, the statements, the comments, the questions of the Judiciary Committee. With futures at negative 8 and down futures at negative 99, it is always, I drive the open, always brought you by BMW, hurry into a tri-state BMW center. During the BMW summer on sales event, receive a credit up to $4,500 on select models. This through July 31st. Visit TristateBMW.com. And we thank BMW and uh, Tristate BMW for their support uh, as uh, well. What is most interesting here in really the investment question of the next 24 hours, as, as John Farrell uh, mentioned earlier, Paul, what will the ECB do tomorrow? I would say the zeitgeist was jawboned until the data this morning, and you really wonder the the probability or possibility of a rate cut. Yeah, absolutely. They've been uh, you know kind of signaling about uh, their willingness to continue to ease, um, and then again, as you mentioned, some of the uh, some weaker data, uh, economic data coming out of Europe certainly could bolster their case to do that. Of course, we've got the uh, U.S. Fed uh, a week from today. Uh, and they're widely anticipated uh, cuts or rates of uh, 25 basis points. So it appears to be, you know, we are in a, a, this phase of a global um, reduction of interest rates to you know, try to continue this 10-plus uh, year economic cycle. We, come up, we welcome all of you to Bloomberg, Savannah, Swanee, Paul Sweeney, and Tom Keen, coast to coast. We are in the midst of the Mueller hearing. We are taking a break uh, from it to get the markets open. When we get the markets open here in exactly three minutes, uh, we will wander back to the comments of Mr. Mueller as well. I, I guess we knew the polarization would be there, but there it is evident. Yeah. There it is evident. I mean, uh, and uh, Mr. Mueller trying to stay within the scope, uh, very uh, diligently trying to stay within the scope of his report, letting it speak for itself. So I think what we're left with is the um, two sides of the aisle kind of using the report, reading from the report to uh, advance their own uh, agendas here. And as you would expect, judiciary showing the geographic reach of the nation, remarkable, just in, you know, some of the highlights that we've seen that I'm sure will be commented on through the American evening. Mr. Radcliffe of Texas was fiery. I know that he's been listed by certain organizations as the most conservative member of Congress, certainly one of the one, two, or three most conservative members. And then, of course, Mr. Dadler, lead, Mr. Nadler, rather, leading the Democratic uh, charge. Stephen Cohen, uh, speaking right now, he is from Memphis. He is a Democrat from Tennessee and is from a good part of Memphis uh, as well. He is going out at immense length with Mr. Mueller, uh, it appears, sitting in silence, uh, ready to dive in uh, with yes, no questions. There's a lot of yes, no questions. <laughs> yeah. We couldn't run radio that way, could we? No, you could not run radio. Will the market that. go up? Yeah. <laughs> yes or no? Exactly. And uh, a, lot, a lot of referrals back to the language <laughs> in, in the report, so uh, that seems to be uh, where Mr. Mueller wants it to keep his responses. Yeah, I believe we also have under many monitors, Prime Minister May now back at Parliament, and rather 10 Downing Street, standing out in 10 Downing Street with Mr. May making comments, parting comments uh, to the assembled uh, media. These are final words. I believe she will head off to see the Queen. She may have already done that, but I believe 
Uh, she heads off to see the Queen, and then all the pageantry of Mr. Johnson's private meeting with Queen Elizabeth II, as well the staff of Prime Minister May standing out on the corner. I do not, I do not see Lawrence the cat. <laughs> no, I do not see Lawrence because this is, you know, pretty poignant, pretty uh, part of the uh, transfer yeah. of power uh, in London. And, and re just remarkable to see this, Mr. Shabbat now speaking uh, uh, after uh, Mr. Uh, Cohen as well. We're going to get the market open with futures at negative nine, down futures negative. Uh, 103 Boeing with a really difficult earnings report. What a shock! I mean, you talk about expecting unexpected. Yeah. Negative cash flow, and they, uh, to their great credit, they put it in a single line bullet. Yep. One the negative dollars. cash flow, yep. and they paid a dividend. Yep. You know, and they, they paid a dividend, and yeah. uh, you know the, the key key issue is when are they going to get the 737 Max back in the air? I think the market's kind of discounting uh, sometime right at the end of the year. Yeah, as well. We listen. And to the pageantry at the New York Stock Exchange, and of course the NASDAQ, uh, with the market opening, our final print of the Dow, uh, of negative 101, negative 102, as we flip over the cash uh, market as well. Caterpillar, when I believe it was David Wilson, said a 4% uh, decline 20 minutes ago, uh, showing some of the international challenges as well. So with the market open, Mrs. May uh, wanders back through the 10 Downing Street door for one final uh, time. There's a lot going on around the world with yeah. negative 117 on the Dow. Let's go back to the Mueller hearing. Mr. Shabbat asking questions now of the former special prosecutor. By the U.S. government. Are you aware of that? It's outside my purview. Okay. Thank you. One of the key players uh, in the, I'll go to something different. Um, one of the key players in the June 2016 Trump Tower meeting was Natalia Vizinyevska, uh, who you described in your report as a Russian attorney who advocated uh, for the repeal of the Magnitsky Act. Uh, Vizinyevska had been working with none other than Glenn Simpson and Fusion GPS since at least early 2014. Um, are, are you aware of that? Outside my purview. Thank you. But uh, you didn't mention that or her connections uh, to Glenn Simpson and Fusion uh, GPS. Uh, in, in your report at all. Um, so let me move on. Now, NBC News has reported the following. Quote, Russian lawyer Natalia Vizinyetskia says she first received the supposedly incriminating information she brought to Trump Tower describing alleged tax evasion and donation to Democrats from none other than Glenn Simpson, the Fusion GPS owner. Um, you didn't include that in the report, I assume. You're saying that's the matter of being handled by others at the Department of Justice. Okay, thank you. Um, now, your report spends 14 pages discussing the June 9, 2016 Trump Tower meeting. Um, it would be fair to say, would it not, that you spent significant resources investigating that meeting? Well, I, I refer you to the, uh, uh, the report. Okay, and, and President Trump wasn't at the meeting. No, we were not. Thank you. Now, in stark contrast to the actions of the Trump campaign, we know that the Clinton campaign did pay Fusion GPS to gather dirt on the Trump campaign from persons associated with foreign governments. Um, but your report doesn't mention a thing about Fusion GPS uh, in it, and you didn't investigate Fusion GPS's connections to Russia. So let me just ask you this. Um, can you see that from neglecting to mention Glenn Simpson and Fusion GPS's involvement with the Clinton campaign, to focusing on a brief meeting at the Trump Tower that produced nothing, to ignoring the Clinton campaign's own ties to Fusion GPS, why some view your report as a pretty one-sided attack on the president? Well, I, have, uh, I tell you, it is still outside my purview. All right, and I, I would just note finally that uh, I guess it's just by chance, by coincidence, that the things left out of the report tended to be favorable to the president. Fire my time to expire. Yeah, Gamble well, comes down on the gentleman from outside Cincinnati, Mr. Shabbat. A very close election last time, 51% to 47. I'm going to try that tonight, Paul. Outside, that's outside my purview. <laughs> Did you get to work at the dining room table? I don't think so. Let us continue with the judiciary. Uh, hearing, uh, right now, Mr. Johnson, because you had 